just have the number for judicial administration. So you can go ahead and call there. Okay. That's the only phone number that we have. So I'm recording the notices because everyone's really confused about the hours and everything else. And you communicate directly with the attorneys, but not all the pro pers. So okay. he just told me why I was recording these notices that I could not record through the glass. You want to tell me where there's an order anywhere on here that says I cannot record through the glass of the courthouse? I don't know. Um, if you want to record all these orders, that's fine with me. I need some direction. Uh, Miss Bassey is here, and Miss Bassey is being Miss Bassey, and I caught her on camera turning on her camera slash video function on her iPad. I can't confirm she's not recording or not, but she is acting very Miss Bassey-like. If you can please give me a call, we can get some direction from you, what you want me to do. Uh, it would be really appreciated. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. This is Susan Bassey, and the day before 4th of July this year, a federal judge issued an order that impacts all of us. We always knew we had a right to record the police. However, in Oregon, they had issued state laws that said in order to record a public official, you had to obtain their consent. So a group known as the Veritas Project decided to file a lawsuit against the state. They claimed that such laws were unconstitutional. And a win in that lawsuit is a win for all of us because it means that we all have a right not only to record the police, but to record public officials. That's anyone from your local district attorney and your dog catcher all the way up to the mayor and your county supervisors or county council. No clue. So county council is in charge of whether I can record through the glass. Or the presiding judge. You'll have to take it up with them. Okay, and your name and badge number? Deputy Craig 1869. Thanks. Uh-huh. Elected officials, public employees, lawyers, and judges convinced voters and taxpayers that they would build a courthouse in Santa Clara County, the heart of Silicon Valley, that would provide a therapeutic experience for people involved in divorce and custody cases. They told the public that this courthouse would be different, state of the art, it would be open and transparent, and it would provide every amenity possible at a cost of $283 million. But immediately, these public officials started issuing policies, including no photographing inside that courthouse that they built with taxpayer money. Public officials, judges, and public employees also misled taxpayers and voters about the outside of this courthouse. They had architectural drawings made up, claiming that there would be a new civil plaza where people could meet and gather and express their opinions and ideas about the courts. But as soon as the courthouse was built, the judges inside the courthouse started issuing orders to chill speech. No protesting, no leafleting, and no photography. They tried to arrest protesters who were protesting on the sidewalk. No justice, no no Within the first year that this courthouse was open, it became obvious that it wasn't affordable. It was $105 million in debt. All that shiny new glass and marble pillars wasn't able to be afforded by the taxpayers who were asked to pay for it. And then the court judges used these sheriff's deputies at $200,000 a year and up to hand out their unconstitutional orders, orders that said there could be no protesting, no picketing, no leafleting, and no photography on this courthouse grounds, completely unconstitutional orders designed to chill speech and to criminalize dissent about the family courts. Without cameras in family court, we have no transparency over those public proceedings, nor do we have transparency over the judges who work in those courtrooms and the attorneys they appoint to be private judges and minors counsel. Without cameras, we can't see the conflicts and we can't see how exactly these attorneys are supposedly acting in the best interests of children whose parents are involved in a divorce case. Did you think that, that you would ever hear an attorney talking like that? I did not, nope. Okay. So you're 19 years old. I am. And yes. you're outside the family courthouse. I am, yes. So the woman that just walked by you, her name is Elise Mitchell. Okay. And the courts decide that she is supposed to help um, children whose parents are involved in divorces. So she gets appointed into their cases. I understand. Did you hear what she just said to me? When she, did, yes. What did she say to me? Well, in some quote words, she said, fuck you, and, 
you know, from there up, you know, all the way up from over there to the door. Did you hear her say I was crazy? I did, yes. Santa Clara County has the highest number of Miners Council appointments that we've seen in the state. We're still waiting to get some records, but hundreds of attorneys are appointed every year. And when they are, they are guaranteed immunity and an ability to keep billing parents and taxpayers for their work. Their work is never clearly defined. They're simply appointed to act in the best interest of the children. That's not a legal term, and there is nowhere we can find that children have a positive outcome by having an attorney be in their lives over their friends, their family members, and the people who love them, and just simply happen to be in family court because of a divorce. These attorneys are allowed to bill a reasonable sum, but they define what a reasonable sum is, and judges must approve their application for payment either by taxpayers or parents, and they rarely question those bills, even when they know those bills to be padded. For over 30 years, these courts decided which media would be invited to provide information to the public about what was going on inside those courthouses. And now, there are a number of parents that are leafleting the area and surrounding communities to educate the public and kids about what's really happening in our family courts. And the best case to do that with is a case involving Maya and Sebastian out of Santa Cruz, California. If you haven't seen these videos of Maya and Sebastian, you need to get educated because not only was it horrific what a private transportation company did in removing these children from their grandmother's house in Santa Cruz, California, it was more shocking to me that the Santa Cruz police turned their backs so they didn't capture any of it on body cam. And they allowed it to go on simply because a single family court judge had issued an order to put these children into a reunification camp based on the orders and recommendations of the attorneys who were acting in the children's best interests by court appointment. Brian Myers was the Miners Council appointed for Maya and Sebastian. He stayed in the case long enough to bring in all of his buddies, therapists, reunification camps, and all other businesses that were just simply billing the parents. If Maya and Sebastian had come from a family that didn't have money, they wouldn't have used a private transportation company on them, but they may have gotten them into the system nonetheless. What was most shocking to me was that the Santa Cruz police turned their backs so they didn't capture this incident on their own body cams. I've done a records request to the county, to the district attorney, to the courts, and they've also sealed the file in this family law case. And so we're going to handle that issue by getting that matter legally unsealed. And while Maya and Sebastian's case is in Santa Cruz, it connects back to Santa Clara because now Heather Allen has been appointed as the Miners Counsel for Maya and Morris Bissett for Sebastian. And so chilling speech, regardless of where it's done, causes great public harm. And therefore, we're going to continue to report on who's leafleting, who's speaking, and who's making videos and putting them up online to talk about family court.